Jesus be glorified. Lord 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 Jesus be glorified in me, in me. Lord Jesus be glorified. Lord Jesus be glorified. Lord Jesus be glorified in me. Jesus, who will give you all the glory, who will give you all the praise, who will give you all the glory, Jesus, <laughs> be glorified, be glorified. Come be glorified in me. Come be glorified, Jesus. Come be glorified. Come be glorified in me. Come be glorified. Come be glorified, come be glorified in me. Come be glorified, come be glorified, come be glorified in me. If Jesus is glorified, if Jesus is exalted, then that means you can't be. Then that means all your thoughts can't be. Then that means all your ideas can't be. Jesus is glorified in me. If Jesus is glorified, then I can't be. He's glorified. He's glorified. He's glorified. And he'll share his glory with nobody else, not even you. Be glorified, be glorified, be glorified in me. Be glorified, be glorified, be glorified. Be glorified. <laughs> Be glorified. 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 
Every part of you, so you get lost in the sun. You get lost, we can't even see you anymore. You got no name, you lose the way you look, the way you sound. You get lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. Then you shine bright. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. <laughs> you get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. And then you shine bright. You get lost, you get lost, you get lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, lost in the sun. You get lost, you get lost, lost in the sun. Woo! You get out the glory. Baptize me, come baptize me, come baptize me with your Holy Ghost. Come baptize me, come baptize me, come baptize me in your Holy Ghost.
I'm a child, 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 I'm a child of the most high God. I'm a child, 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 child of the child, I'm a child, child of a child of the most high God. Oh such is the kingdom of heaven. You gotta come like a little child. You can't come holding on to yourself, aware of yourself, conscious of how you look, conscious of where you've been. When you get lost in Jesus, all of that goes away. church service going on in heaven right now. I just feel it celebrating with them. We're just a part of that church service already going on. We don't, we don't, we don't stick out like a sore thumb. We look like we belong there. Lost in his glory, captivated by God, not bored in the house of the living God where his presence dwells. Oh, but we're captivated, captivated my soul. Come on, give Jesus a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything. He wants everything. He wants everything. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Every time, every time he wants everything. There's not a point in time where he doesn't want everything. He always wants everything. Every time. Everything. Every time. God wants everything. He wants all of you. He loves all of you. He wants all every bit of you. He's in love with his children. He's in love with you. He wants everything every time. What's the alternative? Save a little bit for you so you got just enough to get back home and get in bed. Save a little bit for you. No, give him everything. Save nothing for you. Hold nothing back for you. Give him everything. Every time. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we came to the church of a living God. The living God. Not a, not a building made with walls and a roof. Lord, we came into a holy habitation. We came into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. A candlestick in the earth ordained by God to be here. A holy place, a sacred place. It's where we came to. We come not casually with a half a heart, with a half of any of us. That offering will be rejected. Rejected as it always has been. The whole offering is accepted. The one without spot, the one without blemish in the Old Testament. And the one without spot and the one without blemish in the New Testament, Christ Jesus. He did die in our place, but he also showed us how to. He showed us how to lay down our lives, how to offer praise worthily, how to give it all, how to give everything, every time, to never hold back, to never come into his presence in any casual way. As if it's just a building off of Carroll Canyon Road. No, 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 no. We go to a holy place, a holy habitation, a miracle room, a miracle place, a miracle. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a miracle. It's not a building, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. It was birthed in a miracle. A miracle. 
Everything about your life is a miracle. A miracle. Thank you for your miracles here tonight, God. God's going to do miracles tonight. He's going to do miracles. The ministry of man can offer you nothing. Nothing. Nada. Zip. Zilch. Nothing. You don't need the ministry of Mark Spitzberg, and you don't need the ministry of Kelly Leger, Geneva Spitzberg, and you don't need the ministry of man. What you need is the ministry of Jesus. So what we need is the ministry of Jesus to appear. You may need Jesus to be seen. We can, I can offer you nothing. But the ministry of Jesus, if Jesus is seen tonight, huh, then we preach the gospel to the poor, those poor in spirit. Then we, then, then we preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. We bind up the brokenhearted. If Jesus is here, if he's not here, then we all leave the same way. We can't. Because man can offer you nothing. But if Jesus is here, if Jesus is here, ha, 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 then the ministry of Jesus will be here. His ministry. So we say, tonight we'll have miracles. So tonight we'll just have signs and wonders. Tonight we'll just be, we'll be overwhelmed by the presence of God because Jesus is here. Jesus is here. A miracle. I see some need to have their lives redefined. Redefined. You know what a redefining moment is in your life? When all of a sudden something becomes apparent, just, wow, I never knew it was like that. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Or some, some, some place is a catastrophic event and it might happen tonight. You might have a catastrophic event. You might die. You could lose your life tonight. Catastrophic. It's wonderful. Some people could think it's catastrophic. But God would so come and so reveal himself that everything would get redefined on the level of heaven, on the level of the spirit. You stop seeing after the eye, hearing after the ear, thinking after the mind, that God would so reveal himself to you that all those earth-bound believers bound to the earth, like, like gravity binds your body to the earth, these things that bind your, your spirit to the earth, and the things would just come off so you could see clearly, so you're not bound free, liberated to dance and sing and shout. So if God's dancing, you're dancing. And he is because he dances over you. And if he's singing, then you're singing because he's singing over you. He's laughing. He who sits in the heaven laughs. We got these ideas about God. It's not like that. He's not conservative. He's not, he's not stoic. I mean, he's got white hair and all that, but that's just from that radiant light. He's not old. He's much more like a child. I'm a child, I'm a child. He's much more childlike, much more. Such as the kingdom of heaven, suffer the little children to come into me. The demeanor of heaven, the demeanor of the heart that's just light. He's given us a light heart, not a heavy heart, a light heart. The only things that keep it, keep it heavy are the C-R-A-P. The cares, riches, and the pleasures, right? Some of that seed goes on that ground, and the cares and the riches and the, the cares, riches, and the pleasures come and they choke it out. You can't bear fruit as you should, as you ought. You can't bear it. Because the cares and the riches and the pleasures. And all those things in and of themselves aren't necessarily bad. Unfortunately, right when we give people to permission to do any of those things, they just gobble it up. Cares and riches and pleasures. Because God wants to give you all those kind of things. God wants, look, there's a pleasure of, taking, of going to sleep that feels good, and it's pleasurable. You need it, right? There's, there, God wants to provide, God wants to provide finances for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless us in the earth. He wants to do all those things. Cares, there's some good cares. Like, you need to, you know, you need to care about your children. That's a good thing, right? There's some good cares. But what can happen is those things begin to just, they can weigh us down. It's too much. We start trying to do them all on our own strength. We get these two scriptures all confused. This one that says, seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you and delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. God has a part to play and we got a part to play. And we are continually getting it all confused. 
Seek first the kingdom of heaven and he'll add all things unto us. Oh no, we're trying to add all things unto us. He said, seek first and I'll do that. Delight yourself in me. I'll give you the desires of your heart. Man, we go after our desires every day. Oh, the desire of my heart is for this and for that. But he said he'd give it to us. He'd give us the desire of our heart. He would do that if we delight ourselves in him. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Man, I'm so glad to be back here. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo I know that this is a church set here by the Lord Jesus Christ. It was established by the Holy Ghost. By Jesus established this church in the earth. It is a true candlestick in the earth. It is a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some churches you go to and you wonder. You too? <laughs> Did God start this? <laughs> I don't see too much the ministry of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. The ministry of Jesus. That's what we're gonna, what's, what's going to happen tonight, the ministry of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, have, I haven't been here for, I think, maybe seven months. Isn't that crazy? God has been doing so many amazing, amazing, amazing things. Can I tell you about some of the good things? Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I left the presence of the Lord. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You just have to let me, like, just get it for a moment because you're in so many places and everybody's like, and it's like you got to, like, water the ground and water it and water it and water it and water it. And you pray they give you, like, more than three or four meetings because it's going to take a lot more than that to water it and water it and water it. So at some point, the, the, the glory of God can just... Go in and, and take them away to heaven because they're so earthbound, so used to being caught up in the earth and things of the earth, you know. <laughs> Night one with them is usually shell shock. They're like, <laughs> probably the first time, like when we came and said in inviting place service, <laughs> we're like, what did he say? I don't know what he said. It felt really good, but I have no idea what he just said. I tell people, listen to my pastors, like turning on a, you turn it on a fire hose and trying to, trying to take a drink. You, you just got to just sit there and just, Take it. Pray in the Holy Ghost or something. You know, it's your, be it's your best shot at it. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, about um, this time last year, around this time last year, at the beginning of 2014, I got so hungry and I got so thirsty to do more for Jesus. What we have here is so precious. And it's so beautiful and it's so awesome. But I just got hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And of course, you know, as you know, that led me to basically my thought was this. Nobody's giving me a microphone right now. And so there's a park on the corner and there's a bunch of people who don't know Jesus. So I'm going to go tell them about Jesus because they need him. And that's the ministry. And so I started going and telling people about Jesus in our, in our parks. And you guys are, a lot of you guys are a part of all that and that just stirred and burnt in me more and more and more and more and more and it just led to to different things that burst in my heart not things I was trying to create things that would just burst out of my my innermost being and I'd be like I need to go do this pastor can I do this I need to do can, pastor can I do this and the pastor's like yes go go and so that it man it has led it has led me from here to around the world a couple of times already since the last time I I saw you God just being good, God just being so, so, huh. There's so many wonderful, wonderful things that he's done. But it started as being a, uh, a faithful son in the house, being faithful right where I was. And then as I just got hungry to do more, got hungry to do more, my, my pastor allowing me to do more, seeing the gift of God, seeing the gift of God in your life. And said, yeah, I see that, do that. I see that, do that. And so we started ministering to all these, all the people in the parks. And basically, you know, it's our version of kind of mini crusades, right? We go out there and we preach the gospel to people and many come to the Lord and pray for people. People get baptized in the Holy Ghost and healed and saved and you, just all of it, beautiful. And um, so I just kept going with that. And, and um, throughout the summer, I saw some radical things happen. I'd go, I'd, God is like, was like in some way slowly weaning me as it, well, no, it wasn't much of a wean. It was more like, you're done. Um, you know, you can, be, you can be really caught up 
in the things of the world. Not, not, not sinful things, just the, just the natural, carnal, everyday things that you don't even realize all that God has for you on the under, other side. You don't even realize, like, it's, it's, it's a far off. Yeah, one day, one day, one day, one day, one day, I'll do, one day, one day. And you don't realize um, how beautiful, how glorious it is, everything that he has waiting for you over there. And it's like I was talking about, it's those redefining moments when you step out and you're like, this is what you had all the time? And I thought all this other stuff had to be in order for me to do it. It I could just do this? He's like, yeah, just do this. So I began to just do this and just begin to go everywhere preaching. I would show up at a, because I was still running my company, and I'd show up at a, a party that I needed to attend in Florida with some, some clients and, and whatnot. And normally I wouldn't go to those, those kind of things, but I felt, I felt I needed to go to it. It was a three-day thing in this, like, giant mansion in Florida. And these people aren't, like, you know, hardcore worldly people. You know, they'd, they're not saved, but they're not gonna, it's not going to get crazy. And so I felt like I needed to go to this thing. I felt I, felt I needed to. And I knew God wouldn't have me go for just to go hang out with some people who don't know Jesus. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna, there's got to be a purpose. There's got to be a divine order. I mean, there's got to be something stern on the inside of you. We're there for a purpose. I'm there to get them saved. Or I got, I'm not hanging out. I'm the camp of the enemy. So I go to this party. And um, <laughs> night one goes by. I'm just hanging out, just sitting by the pool and talking to people. And night two goes by, hanging out, talking to people. Night three comes. And they all know I'm in love with Jesus, full of God. I mean, they know. <clears throat> and we're sitting in this living room. This, this, I mean, just, just wealth, wealth, natural wealth. You know, you're looking at a, at a glass floor that looks down to the garage at where the Ferraris park. And, you know, you're just like, Jesus, what am I doing here? And, and I'm sitting there the last night. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. And I guess at some point something had come out of my mouth about Jesus. And a little later, one of the girls on the other side of the, of the room there says, what did you mean when you said this? And right when she said that, I feel the anointing go whoosh. And I said, well, what I meant, and then I just begin to minister by the Holy Ghost. It's a small gathering. There's probably 20 people there at this, at this deal. And I just begin to minister by the Holy Ghost. One hour goes by. Two hours go by. Three hours go by. We're into our fourth hour, and I'm just ministering by the Holy Ghost. By this time, every eye is <laughs> captivated. The room is filled with the presence of the Lord. They don't know what it is, but it's filled with the presence of the Lord. And I'm just ministering out of heaven. And then the same girl, deep into this time, says, well, I deal with a lot of fear. And then I felt the anointing really fall on me. And I stood up and I said, well, I have the cure for fear. And she's like, she says, she says that she goes, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> it was too late. <laughs> and I walk over to her and I just start praying for her. And right when I start praying for her, this devil manifests. And she starts seizing up. Her back starts seizing up. She's like, I'm being choked. I don't, I'm, I'm seizing up. And I go after praying, after that thing, praying, praying, praying. And nothing happens. And I'm like, Lord, what's, what's happening here? And I take my hands off, you know. And she calms down a little bit. I'm like, what's the deal, Lord? And I just like, you know, whatever, God will show me. And I keep ministering to other people. I mean, I'm praying for people getting baptized. These, these people don't know the Lord. Baptizing the Holy Ghost, baptizing the Holy Ghost, baptizing the Holy Ghost. So I'm praying for him, praying for him. The girls is by the end of it going, pray, we don't need alcohol every night to be happy. I'm like, in Jesus' name. Like, the drinks have gone from their hands to the center of this table because they don't want to do, I mean, because God has flooded the place. And um, hallelujah. And so I look back over at this girl, and this girl, this girl says, Lord says to me when I look over at her, it was all messed up. He said, she's not mine. Okay. And I said to her, I said her name, and I said, um, have you ever called on the name of the Lord to, to save you, to be, your, to be your, your God, your king, to rule over your life, to have your heart, to make you a new creation? And she's like, well, 
Not those exact words, you know. And uh, I said, well, pray with me right now. And Jesus is going to come in. She's still like all freaking out, you know. Uh, so I'm, I pray. I, I pray. She prays after me. And the second that she's done praying, she's, the devil just goes. She feels great. And she's just like, I feel great. I feel great. I am said, that's because you've become a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's because... That's because old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. You're brand new now. Those things can't rule over you. They can't rule over you. They have no dominion over you anymore. Now you're a slave into righteousness. You're free. You can't take, can't take you prisoner. It was just radical. So this, by, I mean, we're there by three o'clock in the morning. I mean, maybe short of maybe one or two people. Everybody had been touched radically by the fire of God, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, as you begin to just flow, as you begin to pray for everybody in that place. I mean, radical. Hearts came back to the Lord who had been away for a long time in the middle of this, this party. And, you know, they're celebrating themselves at this thing, their achievements. And God shows up on the scene and just blow, blows, the, blows the thing up. And um, the ministry of Jesus showed up. The ministry of Jesus. We, gotta, we have to learn to get out of the way because the ministry of Jesus wants to. The ministry of Jesus is present in the earth right now, today. But too many people make it about them. They get in the way and the ministry of Jesus cannot be seen. He cannot do his signs. He cannot do his wonders because we're all caught up in us and us can't do no signs and wonders. We can't do that. We can't offer praise as we ought. We can't pour it all out when we're in us. Jesus can't be glorified there. When it's all about you, seeking you and your, he can't, he can't, he can't be glorified there. So that just went into, you know, some, some other sort of ministry. He was like, I'm, I'm sitting there in the summer and Angelo and Paulina had been wanting me to go with, to Finland with them for some time. And I just been, no, no, I always had excuses and things to do. I'm like, no, no, no. Well, at the beginning of the year, God put a big pause button on my company. And it's like, it was going to be our biggest year ever. And then all of a sudden, everything went away. I mean, everything went away. That's fine if month one, month one goes by, month two, month three, month four, month five goes by, six, seven, eight. And you're like, nothing. There's nothing. You know, you got a lot to tell the landlord, you know. And I'm crying out to God. I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. You know what? <laughs> what? Uh, What's happening? Well, and he didn't even, they never said anything. And I'm just like, all right, Lord, I'm just going to go preach my heart out then. I'll just go preach my heart out wherever I can. So I go to Finland with these guys, and I'm just thinking I'm going to Finland. I get there, and two of my dear brothers in the Lord are doing a tour all over Finland, ministering the gospel from the Arctic Circle all the way down to the bottom of Finland. And so they said, you need to come with us. So I go with them, and we go all over Finland preaching the gospel. When I left, when I left the United States, I had $10 in my pocket. I had 10 bucks, And... Um, I just went, and I'd never, never had to sleep under a bridge, never missed a meal. Just God just took care of everything, everything, everything. I come home, I come home from that trip. We come through New York, and immediately when we get there, there's opportunities to, to, to minister. I'm like, all right, God, this is what you're doing now. This is what you're doing. I said, Pastor Mark, can I run? Can I run with this gospel? Can I run? He says, run, run, run with this gospel. And so just beginning to run, run every door that opened, just run, run through it unless we had a, a lack of peace from the Holy Ghost. And so just begin to run and run and run and just have just seen radical, radical, radical miracles, radical miracles. Last weekend, I'm in, I'm in Seattle and preaching for a few nights in, in, um, around Seattle. And before I got on the platform, the last night I'm praying in the back room and I hear the Holy Ghost say to me, he says, he says, the gospel without signs and wonders is no gospel at all. And I said, all right, that's it. And that's what we'll do tonight, Lord. And I went out there and I just began to preach that the gospel, according to, according to the ministry of Jesus, according to the ministry of Paul, the gospel is no gospel at all without signs and wonders. For the kingdom of heaven is not in word, but in power. Paul said, I preach. I came not with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but with the Holy Ghost and with power. Jesus' life declared it. The gospel with power. Paul's life declared it. The gospel with power. And that there wasn't another gospel. Paul said, if, if they come preaching another gospel that we preach to you, if it's an angel from heaven, let him be accursed. But according to their ministries, it was full of signs and wonders and miracles and the display of the life of Jesus and the display of heaven. And, and our prayer is, oh, Lord, uh, all that's going on on earth, let it be done in heaven, right? That's, that's the Lord's prayer. Right? Whatever's done, being done, whatever's done in heaven, Lord, let it be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's our prayer. Let it be done. Whatever's being done in heaven, let it be done in earth. That's what that's saying right there. 
That's what, that's what it's saying, that heaven would come to earth. Heaven came to the earth in the life of Jesus, but then Jesus left and he left us in charge to go do what he did when he was on the earth. The signs and the wonders and the miracles. We run the risk of dying babies in God and just barely making it to heaven. We run the risk of standing before him on that day and, and everything or the majority of what we did with our lives being burnt up right before our eyes. We run the risk. God calls it wood, hay, stubble, everything not built on the foundation of Christ Jesus. Every word spoken, every deed done, every thought thought, bird gone, fruitless, worthless. Can't think of anything worse than you spending your whole life working so hard, going after it, and then you get to the end of it, and it's like, poof, gone. You're like, huh, but, but, uh, only that which is built on the foundation of Christ Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's my prayer tonight, that God would redefine it for you today. God will redefine your life after the Spirit, after the life of God. And it's not all about all these other things we've made it about, the distractions and the cares and the riches and the pleasures. Those things that have become distractions for us so that we can't see Jesus, so we can't see heaven, we can't see all that we're called to be. We see it from time to time, but not every day. It doesn't consume us. It doesn't possess us. It doesn't possess the reins of our heart where he pull us here and he pull us there. Earth stuff does. Earth-bound believers, bound to the earth, bound. I pray that eternity gets just branded on your heart, branded on your heart. If you believe that you're from the earth, if you believe that you're from this place, that you came from earth, you'd be completely ineffective. Some of you believe you came from the earth, that you, you, you're from here. You believe you're from here. You're so nearsighted, all you can see is the hospital room you were born in. But he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You were known. You're not from here. The world would have come and attempt to, to choke out the life of God and, uh, and heaven. But you're not from here. You're not from this place. You don't belong here. You're a pilgrim. But if you think you're from here, then you're going to invest everything you got in this earth. You'll invest it all in the earth. You'll bury it all. Our pastor was talking about burying the talent. You'll bury it in the earth. And you know what it'll produce? Earth. Earth stuff. Not heaven. You buried it in the earth. You can do that with your life. You can bury it in the earth. We're not from this place. We're pilgrims, strangers, sojourners. You're not from here. God desires your, your life to, to be like, you know, if you were like in, in a pond and you had a, a smooth stone, and you, everybody ever skipped rocks from the ocean or anything? And you see that rock when you get a really good one and it just slides right across the top and it's like, ch -ch 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 -ch, slides. That's how light God wants you to be on the earth. Where your life on earth, our, our dear friend James Levesque, you hear him, hear him say, there's a date you, you're born and there's a date you die and there's a dash in the middle. And he says, what are you doing with the dash? But that's what it's like. It's this little piece. It's this little piece of time on earth. It's so short. It's, it's the length of a man's hand. It's a vapor. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. It's, like, it's almost like nothing, but it's so significant. God wants you to be so light in it. Whew. Sliding right across the top of this thing called earth. We're so used to seeing our lives after a, a time frame of, I'm going to be here 70, 80, 90, whatever we get on the earth. And the Bible tells us in Psalms that if we're wise, we'll number our days. We'll number them. We'll realize there's a time I have, there's an expiration date on my life. If we're wise, we'll number our days. I've, done, I've numbered my days a lot of times. I think I got to like, if, man, if I push 90, I think I got to like, I don't know, 2068 or something. I'm just going for it. But you can number your days. It'll give you a reality check for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we're wise, we'll number our days. We'll know that the, the time we're in, the hour we're in, how sacred it is. That everything in God is not casual. Your life is not casual. We treat it way too casual. Way too casual. I have all the time in the world. And I'm going to go home and do my thing tonight. Wake up and do my thing in the morning. Wake up and do my thing all day. We treat it way too casual and not holy. Your life's holy now. It ain't yours. You've been bought with a price. It's a holy thing now. 
Everything about your life has become holy and sacred. Sacred. Hallelujah. 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 Years ago, I used to, on my lunch break, after I'd been saved, I used to go have my lunch down at a, a, a cemetery. It was a nice looking cemetery, but that's not why I went. I went because I would look around at all those tombstones and I would see Jane something, and Fred this and whatever. And I would look at their time on the earth, what they had to do with that one shot. They didn't get another one. They had that one shot and I would wonder what they did with it. I'd wonder, what did they do with it? What did they do that actually mattered, that counted? What, what, would they, what did they actually do with their lives? And then it, I would think to myself, none of these people are really dead. I mean, they're dead in, in the sense of their bodies have fallen off of them. But the eternal being that they are, that everlasting soul, has gone on and is living somewhere. They're alive. I'd look around and go, they're all living. These are all living. What would they cry out and say to me right now? What would they cry out? What would they be crying out to me right now? What would they be saying? So strike me, so strike me that, there's a, that there is a heaven, that there is a hell, that my life is fragile, that it's for a very specific purpose. And I gotta be careful how I treat it. Hallelujah. Mm-mm-mm. There's things that will redefine things for us, change our vowels, flip, flip something upside down. I'll give you a silly example, but take your... Your, your mobile device, your iPad, your phone, whatever it is, the thing where all your information is, the thing that's important to you. It's important to you. You got your stuff in it. Probably don't leave it in your car if you run to the grocery store because you're protective of it. You want to make sure it's okay. You know, you're, you're, you know, if someone were to break in your car, you're like, my iPad, oh, my phone, what? Where's that, that thing that's valuable to me? But if you're riding in your car and that iPad's sitting over here and all of a sudden you get sideswiped by another car, the last thing you're thinking about is the iPad. Immediately, in that moment, everything has been redefined. Every, all values got shifted. First it was iPad. Now, nope, that one's somewhere way at the bottom. All you can think about is life, life, my life, my life. Right? You're at work. Say your wife is pregnant. You're going to have a baby. But I mean, you're at work. You've got all these things. You've got to please the boss. There's things you've got to do. There's things that are important. There's things that you've got you to get done and accomplish. There's a list, there's a list, there's a continual list. Things you're thinking about, I gotta do, gotta do, gotta do, in the rat race, doing it. But then that call comes, that a baby's coming, that, that, that life is coming, and everything gets rearranged in a moment like that. It all gets rearranged. The boss could tell you, if you leave, you're fired. You're like, I'm fired then. I gotta go, I gotta go do it. Because that has become the most important thing to you in that moment. Everything else, everything has been reordered, revalued. Things, everything has changed in that moment. For me, for me, it happened the day I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I got the full package, saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost all at the same time. Same time, redefined for me. Had no idea Jesus was this real. Had no idea heaven was this real. Had no idea. No one ever told me God was this real. I was casual about it. God was an option for me. Isn't it an option for everybody? I mean, it's, you know. I was casual about the whole thing. Had no idea. Then God, uh, in his mercy and his grace, came and revealed his son to me. And the power of the Holy Spirit came and flooded my being. And all I could say was, what is this? What is this? And this man just looks at me who prayed for him and he says, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. For days, all I could say was, how come nobody ever told me that God was this real? How come nobody ever told me? I grew up in a good old Baptist church my whole life. Nobody told me he was this real, that he's this real, that he'll come and he'll manifest himself to you. He'll touch you. He'll consume you. I had no idea that life could be lived out that way. I didn't sit in a Pentecostal church where everybody's flopping around all the time saying they're feeling Jesus. I didn't, that wasn't me. That's was the first time I ever experienced Jesus. Like that, it changed my life in a moment. Like that, August for me, it'll be 17 years. That thing flipped my whole life upside down, and I never went back. 
I never went back to a thing of this world. Everything in me went higher and higher from glory to glory to glory in God. It got redefined for me early on. And I never got stuck in religious and, you know, sat in some church and got religious. I sat here for 10 years, but man, I needed all that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to redefine something. He wants to redefine your life for you. He wants to redefine it all. Then you're not from here. It's too easy to think about yourself as a body possessing a spirit, but you're not. You're a spirit who possesses a body. You're an eternal being, but you live in a carnal, temporal world that would have you distracted with temporary things that will all perish with the using, that will matter not. Nothing will matter except built on the foundation of Christ Jesus. Nothing. Nothing will matter except for that. Can I read some scriptures to you? Are you happy about that? Hallelujah. I didn't tell you. So I'm in Seattle this weekend. I go out on the platform. God just tells me that about the gospel without signs and wonders is no gospel at all. And I've, ne I've never seen more miracles in my whole life. This is just like Monday before last. Never seen more miracles in my whole life in a single meeting. Small group of people. But everybody was in one accord. Everybody was so hungry. Everybody was so thirsty. The ministry of Jesus was there. Jesus was there. And so he did his works. He does what Jesus does. I began to just walk and I'd start, I started hearing things. I started hearing swollen feet are being healed right now in Jesus' name. Atrophy in the feet is being healed right now. Elbows, tendonitis being healed. I mean, I don't, I don't, talk, I don't sit around and think about these medical terms, okay? But I started hearing him like, tendonitis is being healed. Oh, rotator cuffs are being healed right now. When I see a ladder in the neck right now. I see numbers and letters on either side of the neck. Uh, it's, a, it's white and it's being healed right now. I see it being healed right now. In Jesus' name, I walk over to this side of the room. And I'm just, because you're just, it's just pouring out of you. You're not, you're outside of yourself. God, is, Jesus is ministering and you're just watching him. I walk over here and said, cancer is being healed right now. Cancer is being healed right now. I lay my hands on a lady. She's the one with cancer. God just gives this lady a miracle. We don't have a doctor's report yet, but she hadn't been able to eat in weeks. You know, she's coming off of this chemo and all this stuff, and she was just ravishingly hungry after that and ate the whole rest of the time. Starving, hungry, energy. You know, she's like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I mean, just right and left. People are getting healed. I'm like, raise your hand if you got healed. You're like, boom, boom, healed, 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 healed. All these people. I'm like, if anybody else has pain, you need to come here right now. You need to come here right now. First six people that come up. I go to the first one. I lay my hands on them. It was a back trouble. I said, in the name of Jesus. Oh, and I felt the fire of God just touching back. She said, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. I'm like, rejoice. And I go to the next person. I say, what's your problem? A back problem. A back problem. And I'm like, in Jesus' name. Crack, crack. Praise God. Healed. I go to the next person. Back problem. Every one of them. Back, back, back. Six people. God was healing backs. Healed, 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 healed. There was like a neck somewhere in there. But all of them healed, healed. It was amazing. I'm like, at one point, at one point, I'm praying for this lady's ankle that was swollen. And I'm having a conversation with God. And I'm thinking, I'm saying, God, is everybody really getting healed right now? Are all these people getting healed? just beautiful beautiful the level of anointing got so strong in the room you could you could feel it so thick the level of faith the level of oneness that everybody's so like god's here jesus is moving god is doing what he does it's the church it's the ministry of jesus in the place it's the ministry of jesus so beautiful so beautiful the life that we're called to live we're called to live out the life of god the life of jesus not your life the life of Jesus in the earth, not your life. To live in this such place, a place of glory where we, who we could say, Father, this, this glory you've given, like Jesus said, this glory you've given to me, I've given to them so that they might be one even as we are one. We find our place lost in a heavenly realm all throughout the week, all throughout our day, lost in a glory realm, lost in a heavenly realm. And the ministry of Jesus begins to be seen in our lives. When we speak, we don't speak in our own accord. We get transformed before people. We don't sound like ourselves or look like ourselves. He takes over your body and he possesses you. And then Jesus is seen. And then you're not thinking about it when you're sitting next to somebody on an airplane. 
And God just gives a wide open invitation for this person to receive Jesus. And you just pour it in. You're not sitting there thinking, should I do it? Should I not do it? Oh, I don't know. Should, is this the word of the Lord? You're just back and forth in your own mind. Like you do when you're like sitting and you go, do I have a word from the Lord? Should I run up there and give it? Should I prophesy? Should I sing? It won't be no shoulda, coulda. It won't be any of that. You're full. And it just pours out. It just happens. It's a life of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a life that he's called us to. The life that we live. Amen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I love the glory. I love the anointing of God. I love the presence of Jesus. So good. Father, just, just, just fill this place with your precious Holy Spirit, with your glory, with your anointing. Father, I think you know, the hearts are so hungry tonight. I think that they're so thirsty tonight, oh God. They're like that woman with the issue of blood. Many were touching Jesus, but only one really touched him. Only one really touched him. Only one really touched him. The disciples said, Jesus said, who touched me? And they're like, what do you mean who touched you? There's, there's loads of people touching you. It's like, no, 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 no. Somebody touched me. There's a difference between being touched and being touched. Somebody touched Jesus. They touched him on another level, on the level of spirit, on the level of hunger and thirst. If we live our whole lives with the life and the ministry of Jesus, with the measure of the maturity, the fullness of Christ being an option for us, then you will never have it. I can't think of the worst thing than we stand before him and he says, I called you to the measure, the maturity, the fullness of Christ, all available for you, and you wasted it on you, a, a babe in me. At best, you, you got to be like a teenager in the spirit. But I had it all for you waiting. I can't think of anything worse. I mean, not making heaven, that's worse. But I can't think of anything worse after that. Heaven. It's called us to live heaven on earth. The life of Jesus, the life of the Spirit. The divine nature. When you get filled with the divine nature, then you begin to do the divine by nature. That's your new nature. It's a divine nature. Nature just does what it does. It's not striving and trying and toiling and spinning and whatnot. It does what it does. The divine nature does what it does. It does Jesus. It does holiness. It does purity. It does glory. It does laying down its life. This has been probably the coolest year of my life, 2014. I didn't think it would look that way, the coolest year, but it is awesome. God will give you things. God will give you things. I believe this. God will give you things just so you can lay them down at his feet. God will give you things just so they can be a sacrifice. They can be precious. It can be a precious offering unto him. Whatever it is, build a business for 10 years, whatever it is. Something that's attached to your heart, something that means something that you care about. Too often times, we want to give some, God something that doesn't mean anything to us. I make sure when I give in an offering or whatever else that it's, I feel it. I feel it. David, more than once, someone tried to give him an offering to sacrifice to the Lord. And he's like, no, man. No, you're not going to give me an offering. You're not going to give me something that costs me nothing. It's going to cost me. I'm going to feel it. Because if I, if I feel it, God's going to feel it. It's going to be a holy, a precious, a sacred offering. He ain't tipping God. He wants everything, every time, all the time. You want all of his life, you've got to give him all of yours. You want the life of Jesus? You want the ministry of Jesus? You want everything he has for you on the earth and everything after? You gotta give it all. You gotta forsake everything. 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 So easy to be distracted with a cause. Oh, I'm doing this for the kingdom. I'm doing this for the kingdom. I'm doing this. The proof is in the pudding. If you're doing it for the kingdom, you're doing it for the kingdom now. You're doing it now. Not in 10 years when this happens and that happens and this happens. No, you're doing it now. We're doing all this so we can do this and fund the gospel and do this and I know that people's hearts are right and you sometimes you don't even know it you don't even know that 
God's just asking you to be faithful now. He'll give you more. He's got, a, he's got a way he does it. If you're faithful with the little things, he makes you ruler over much. Jesus showed you how, how it worked. If you, if it's not about going after the money to reach the harvest. It's about being faithful with the harvest. Then he'll give you the money to reach the harvest. Will you be faithful with the harvest that he's giving you right now in your home, down the street, in your church, where you are? Will you be faithful with that harvest? If you're faithful with that harvest, he promises to send you out. Paul said, I fully preach the gospel from Jerusalem, home base, to uh, Illyricum and, and out all the way around the world. Started home and it went out. Jesus showed us when he needed tax money. I think it's a beautiful little analogy that I, that I see there. He, the coin was in the fish's mouth. He didn't, say, he didn't say, go after the money. He said, go after the fish. Go after the fish. Go after the harvest. The money will be in the fish's mouth. That's where it'll be. Be going to be faithful with that. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all things will be added unto you. Delight yourself in the Lord and all things will be added. Uh, he'll give you the desires of your heart. We get it backwards. Jesus says, all these things the nations of the world seek. But your father knows you have need of these things. He knows. He's not unaware. He knows. Take no thought for your life, what you'll eat, what you'll drink, where you sleep. Take no thought. All we do is take thought. That's all. Talk about your finances. You're just thinking about, but what happens when I run out? But what happens when, <laughs> take no thought. It's radical. You're saying, what are you doing? Saying, quit my job, go do this. Some people might have to do it. Some people might. I'm not telling you to do that, but somebody, some people might. It'd be a good thing. It might be hard at first and challenging. That's exactly what Pastor Gene was saying. I think it's a blessing. In some ways, those of us who've been entrepreneurs and freelancers and things like that and had to believe God. Had to believe God every day. Had to believe God. Had to. Had to. And people would talk about, oh, when it, all, when, the, when it all goes down and the economy turns right side up, I mean, those people who don't know how to, you know. I'm like, ain't nothing good change for me, man. <laughs> I've been believing God for the last 10 years. I never know where it's all coming from. It's just a miracle. Always a miracle. So let it be. Flip the economy upside down. Bring it on. Ain't nothing going to change for this guy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to read you some scripture. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says this. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they're eternal. They're eternal. You were designed, you were designed as an eternal being. God designed some things to be uh, temporary, as it were. Trees, things, I don't know if that's a product of the fall, it's just the way he made it, but things pass away. Things perish with the using. Things go, but he didn't design you like that. He designed you eternal. He designed you eternal. And that should be a telltale sign of what you're supposed to give your life for. A telltale sign that as an eternal being, you're supposed to be involved in eternal things. Things that don't perish with the using, but things that last forever. At the end of the day, we call it a, a death, but at the end of the day, you're not going to die. Your body's going to fall off of you, but you're going to go on living forever. And you are who you are throughout eternity, who you are right now. If you die right now, that's who you are. I love when I've heard pastor say, I think he was quoting somebody else, but he said, there's no sanctification in the sepulcher, in the tomb. There's no sanctification. There's no thing that gets right when you die. You get it right now, and you die right, or it's wrong now, and you die wrong. You are who you are right now. Who, you're gonna, who you are right now, that spirit man, who you are, is who you're going to be forever forever. There's not a magical thing that happens when you die. Who you are now is who you're always going to be. We want to get it right now. We want to love the things of heaven now. We want to conquer sin now. We want to step into the life of God now. We want it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 19 and 21. Let me say this. People are always talking about 
making a difference. Oh, I want to make a difference. I want to make a difference. That person just made a difference. They just made a difference. People talk about their famous, you know, their favorite, uh, whatever, their favorite rock star, or whoever it is. And like, oh yeah, they just did so much. We just praise and honor them. And oh my gosh, that song is so famous. They won so many awards. And man, that really shaped how I, the direction I went in my life, that one song. And, and they made it, they, they made a difference. I mean, they, you know, I watched the karate kid and man, I became, I wanted to be karate kid, you know, or whatever. I'm like, yeah, you made a difference man but it, it's like you know it's about as much as a difference as painting your house from green to orange I mean you're gonna is it a difference yeah you made a difference and all you're gonna do is irritate the neighbors you didn't like make a you didn't make a difference you didn't change anything it's like they were going down one path and they just went down another path big deal so they went down a different path you made a difference who cares if you made a difference I don't care if you made a difference the world doesn't need you to make that kind of difference it's an eternal difference it's one that, that will affect eternity, their life for eternity. We've got to be careful about our humanism. I made a difference. I'm making a, I'm just like, I'm changing things. And like, who cares? Really, who cares? All your, it's, gonna, it's gone. It's burn up. It's burn up. I was in a different time zone the other day, and um, I wasn't preaching. I was somewhere else. It was a Sunday night. And um, I flipped on the TV, and there was the Oscars. And I haven't watched the Oscars in years because we're always in church. And um, I'm watching these Oscars. You know, I was in the entertainment industry, and so I'm, watch the, I'm watching these things, and I see them all through heaven's eyes now. And I'm watching all of this go down. I'm watching all this take place. And I'm thinking, Lord, all this is going to burn up on that day. This is not going to make heaven. It's all going to burn up. It's all going to burn up. It's all going to be wasted. Everything that people strive for and with their education and their careers to attain this, to attain that, they go after it. They go after it their whole lives. And all of a sudden, right before their eyes, it's all gone. Worthless. Gone. Gone. I thought to myself, Lord, if you, give me, if you gave me that, that Oscar platform, I'd preach a gospel. I said, that's the only way I could possibly see this thing mattering in heaven. If somebody up there got bold and preached your gospel. For years I would time, I would time it. I would actually time, okay, well, if you win this award, how many minutes do you get? How long could I pre- how long could I preach in that amount of time? Well, if you win the best director, well, if you been the win the best movie, well then they get about a minute and forty five. Well they could push it to about two, you know, two fifteen. Man, I could preach right there. I could preach to almost a billion people. At one time, oh, Lord, give it to me. It happens sometimes in my prayer time. I'd just be praying. I'd see myself preaching, preaching. I'm like, give it to me, God. You give me that, and I'll preach your gospel. I'll do it. I'll do it, Lord. I mean, can you imagine standing up there, you know, on a, on a, on a platform like that, and God inspires you and puts a word of the Lord in you, and you, you say something. You say something like, and to show you the, the blindness of your heart, I say right now that all of you watching and all in the room will be blind for the next three days. As a sign and a wonder. And everybody goes blind and the earth is blind. And you said, until you fall on your knees and give your lives to Jesus. That would be radical. I'm like, Lord, I'll do it. Put the word in me. Put it in me and I'll say it. I would flip the world upside down in a moment. In a moment. They wouldn't be playing some music to get you off the platform. They wouldn't know where to press the buttons. I just keep preaching. He's the only way. If you call on him now, you'll receive your sight. You'll be able to see. It gives sight to the blind. I just go for it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm believing for that kind of stuff, man. Yeah. Not get caught up in all their nonsense. Let them rule over me with what's important to find my life for me. No. I'm seeing some opportunities out there I'm praying about. We gotta look for it like that. You start, ah, man. When you, hmm, God starts showing you heaven. You start seeing through heaven's eyes. You're not on the earth, you know, looking up at heaven from afar. You're in heaven, looking down at the earth. You're not part of it. You're not amalgamated with it. You're up in a heavenly realm, looking down at the earth, saying, "Yeah, we can change that. I need to rule and reign with Christ over here. We can fix that and maneuver that." It's all about the kingdom. It's all about the kingdom. It's not on the earth. Oh, I need to. Get into heaven somehow. No, you're in heaven. The Bible says we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Our name is written in heaven. Our conversation is in heaven. Everything about your life is now lived out from a heavenly realm. Lived out from a glorious heavenly realm. Been made available to us through the life of Jesus. Everything, everything. 
Hallelujah. Matthew 6, 19 and 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust and dust, uh, rust doth corrupt, but where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hallelujah. Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Ephesians 6, 19, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in the high, high places. Father, teach us the number of our days, Lord. We think we have so much time. If a... If a day of the Lord is like a, if a day of the Lord is like a thousand years to us, it's a day to Him and a thousand years to us. I mean, I don't know if it really works out like this, but that would mean that uh, that uh, an hour to the Lord would be forty-one point six years for us. So at best, you got about. Two and a quarter hours? Two and a quarter? Okay, you know, if you make it to 83-ish, then you got two hours to the Lord. On the scale of eternity, it's like a blip on the radar. It's a drop in the ocean. If the ocean is eternity and your life's a drop, you're setting yourself up for eternity. Don't get caught up on this little thing. Don't get caught up here. Don't find all your value here. Don't think this is what it's all about. Don't give all your time and your energy to this thing. Understand the heavenly perspective. I preach this self to my I preach this to myself every day I have for years. So I wouldn't get caught up in the things of the earth. I didn't want to get caught up in the things of the earth. I wanted my life to count. I wanted it to matter, to count for eternity. When you understand that everything not built on the foundation of Christ Jesus in your life will see fire and be burnt up, changes everything. You think to yourself all day, Lord, what, what am I doing right now for you? Is this, is this a heavenly, is this, a, is this gonna make heaven? Is this for a heavenly purpose? Everything changes. Everything gets redefined. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 through 15. First Corinthians 3, 11 through 15. For other foundation can no man lay than this that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he is, he's built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so is by fire. The world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. I love this. He's, Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, he's made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he's, he has placed eternity in their hearts. 2 Timothy 2.4, no soldier entangles himself with the affairs of this life that it may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You get kicked out of the army really quick. You get to doing civilian stuff when you're, it's on military time. Ain't gonna work out, it doesn't work out for you very well. Hebrews 12, one. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Colossians 3, 2 through 3. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of this earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. The only things that are going to be able to affect you on the earth are the things that have your affections. The only things that can affect you. The only things that can affect you, period. 
are the things that have your affections. That's it. Nothing else affects you. Your, you doesn't affect you. If it has your, it's a telltale sign to know if your heart's buried in the earth or if your heart's in heaven and he possesses the reins of your heart. What am I affected by? What affects me? Money affect me? What affects me? What do I feel really affected by? If your heart's in heaven, if your life's in heaven, only things in heaven affect you. There's sacred holy places and you only let heaven touch it and you only let God touch you there. These, these beautiful holy emotions. We know the kingdom of heaven is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We know that's the kingdom of heaven. We know that the Bible says that peace becomes an umpire, a, a, a guard, as it were, on our hearts. We guard, it guards our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It becomes a filter, a strong tower, a thing that surrounds us. He who rules the spirit is better than him who takes a city. And we know we rule our spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. He who doesn't rule his spirit is a bit like a broken down city without walls. Anything can just come in and out of it. But this holy, sacred place of our emotions, we've yielded over to God, the place of our affections. Nothing can touch, nothing, I don't let, I, for years, I haven't let anything touch me there but Jesus in a deep way. Nothing, nothing. It's a sacred place in my heart, it's sacred, sacred. Discouragement, sorrow, sadness, any of that nonsense, it's not allowed. It's not allowed, it's from a different camp, a different kingdom. I'm in the kingdom, I'm in the camp of the kingdom of God. All those things are foul things. They belong to a different camp. They belong to a camp of the enemy trying to impose himself on me. They're not natural, normal uh, responses to negative situations. They're not. They're spiritual things imposing themselves on you. They would try and come and take you prisoner so that you'd be ineffective on the earth. And, the, and, the, and the, they work through cares and, and riches and pleasures and circumstances. But if we find our life in heaven, we find it in Jesus, they wouldn't be able to affect us. It couldn't affect us. We wouldn't treat a, a simple feeling of, I'm a little discouraged, I'm a little down, as casual. It wouldn't be casual. We'd see the enemy with a sword in our face, and they're attempting to take us prisoner. He's not satisfied with sorrow. He's not satisfied with discouragement. He wants to grab hold and put you in a prison so you're ineffective the rest of your life. A yo-yo Christian, up and down, up and down. You're going to look at the life of Jesus and you're going to think three things. You're going to look at it and you go, that's impossible. I'm not even going to try. You're going to look at the life of Jesus and you're going to say, okay, I'm going to try. And then you're going to fail because you can't do it. And then you're going to try and you're going to fail. You're going to try and you're going to fail. Or you're going to recognize that the life of God is exactly what I'm called to on, on the earth. And it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take a miracle. It's going to take a miracle for me to live out this life. And then I can't do it in my own strength. Yeah. If Jesus had to be endued with the Holy Ghost... You shall receive the Holy Spirit after the Holy Ghost comes upon you too. You shall receive power. You're going to need it. I love in that scripture, Acts 10, 38, that when it talks about Jesus, it says, Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He wanted to highlight right there that he was from Nazareth. That he wasn't functioning as God. He was functioning as a man who needed the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Talked about that origin. Didn't tell, we know he's from heaven. We know he created it all. But it talked about Nazareth. He needed to be endued for power from on high. If he was ever, he couldn't have done what he did. If Jesus needed the power of the Holy Ghost to live out the life he did, we're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost to live out the life we did of Jesus. Well, otherwise, we're going to be ineffective. We're going to be ineffective without the anointing, without the power, without the presence of God. Ineffective. Ineffective. If I hear one more person say something about being relevant, oh my gosh. <laughs> we got to be relevant. I've been in a lot of churches, okay? And uh, I was talking about the flesh, the flesh, the flesh. Well, that was my flesh. Well, that, I'm like, <laughs> we're not in the flesh. I'm not in the flesh. I shut the door in the flesh just like I shut the door on sin. It's done. I'm not giving no excuse. I'm like, I'm done with all that. They're irrelevant. Relevant. They're, they're irrelevant. I'm like, they, they try to be so much like the people that they're, minister, that they're ministering to. At best, it's the blind leading the blind. They haven't spirits of power and presence of God. They can't set anybody free. So they're just, what are they, what are they ministering it's irrelevant. The most relevant people are irrelevant. The only relevant thing in the earth is the life of Jesus. 
It's the power of God. He, there's nothing more relevant than his life. Without, without his power, without the anointing, we are irrelevant. There's a way to preach the gospel, and there's a way to fully preach the gospel. And if there's a way to, to fully preach the gospel, why in the world would you want to preach it any other way? Are you, I mean, that's just stupid. <laughs> Yet people do it. And every, church services everywhere. Everywhere has got a man of God sit, sitting behind there just, just reading the scripture. You're like, well, it's the gospel, it's the power of God and the salvation. Yeah, the full gospel is it's the power of God and the salvation. The gospel that Jesus preached. Let's define it properly. The gospel Jesus preached. The gospel Paul preached. The gospel where he said, go and do and do all these things. These signs and wonders are gonna follow you. Let's define it right. The gospel, the gospel, not your version of the gospel. You go and you preach to people's intellect. Some mentalist sin in God, it doesn't exist. You don't get there that way. He's a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Takes a miracle. Transformation. It's a miracle life. You hold on to the natural, the carnal, continually thinking about yourself and all about you. It'll never work. You'll never be effective. You'll never have the life of Jesus. You'll be wanting on that day. If you're even there, if you even make it. We want the life of Jesus. That's my prayer every day, oh God. They don't need the ministry of Kelly Leger. They don't need my ministry. They need the ministry of Jesus. Jesus, come be seen. Jesus, show yourself. Be manifest. Do your work, oh God. Do your works. They need you. They don't need me. Here. Here, Jesus. Here. <laughs> it's the best thing I learned how to do is get alone with Jesus in a public place. The best thing. It's like you're in that prayer time with him. You're crying out to God. You're in the car. Just get alone with Jesus in a public place and just begin to worship the Lord. That's how, that's how it works for me. Just touch heaven. I just unleash all that's in my heart to Jesus. And he gets all the glory. Because if I'm lifted up, nobody's drawn unto me. But as he's lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. So he's got to be glorified. He's got to be exalted. We put all the focus on him. And it's all about Jesus. And then the ministry of Jesus can be seen. Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Do your work, oh God. Do your work in the hearts of your people. Jesus. 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 Mm. Heaven is not an option for me. The life of Jesus is not an option for me. I'm running after it with everything I've got like I never have before. It's not an option. I won't have those who've gone before me be a testimony against me because they went there and I didn't. I'm not doing it. I'm gonna have the life of Jesus. I'm gonna have the ministry of Jesus. It's available to all. Who thirst. Jesus, in John 7, 37, he stood up on the great day of the feast and he declared, he said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. He didn't say, hey, any man come. He didn't say, any man come. He said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. We know that it's it's free, all free, freely given. But it ain't, it's not cheap. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. It costs you your whole life. It costs you your identity. It costs you how you want people to see you. It costs you everything. It costs you everything. It costs you your career. It costs you your dreams. It costs you everything. It costs you everything to have the life of Jesus. It costs you everything. It costs you everything. It costs you everything. Otherwise, you don't get it. You want, when you want to do both, you don't get it. You won't, nope, nope, not for you. Maybe it's for somebody else. Not for you. There's prerequisites. There's prerequisites to the life of God. There's prerequisites. If you be willing and obedient, you shall receive, eat, eat the good of the land. There's prerequisites. 
your hunger, your thirst. It's what's required. If it's an option for you, you don't get it. It's not for you. I guess it's for somebody else, so it's not an option for you. Woman with the issue of blood, not an option. Not an option. Many people, as it were, said in the meeting, but she touched him. She touched him. It wasn't an option for her. And he felt it. And he answered her request. He who hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. Be filled. We're so hungry for you, Jesus. We've become so thirsty. You know, it's funny how you can be in a meeting. You can be in a meeting and the gospel's being fully preached and people are getting healed. People are getting saved. We're seeing God's ministry, Jesus' ministry take place. But not everybody is hearing the full gospel. Not everybody is receiving the full gospel. Some are just hearing words. When the ministry of Jesus wants to be seen. When somebody right next to him could be receiving the full gospel. Could be receiving it all. At some point. At some point. There's got to be a day. Where you decide. Enough is enough. The life of Jesus has been made available for me. What am I doing with the dash? What am I doing? It's short. It's small. It's here today. It's gone tomorrow. What am I doing with it? All has been made available, and I have to answer for why I didn't have it all. God makes it available and why I didn't have it all. Everything. Everything. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and he said unto him, One thing you lack, one thing you lack, one thing you lack. Go thy way, sell whatsoever you have, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come, take up your cross, and follow me. One thing you lack, one thing. Go sell all, take up your cross, and follow me. It's the plea of the Father. Father labors for you. He labors for you. What kind of inheritance do you want? What kind of possessions do you want? Do you want things that are going to perish at the using? You're going to have to buy them again every week. You're going to have to save them up. And at the end of your, at the end of your days on earth, that's going to count for nothing. Because here's what Father's purpose to give you the nations for your inheritance and the other most parts of the world for your possessions. <laughs> I've, never got, I've never understood that more than I do now. <laughs> He wants to give you the nations for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the world for your possessions, the precious fruit of the earth, that fruit that that won't fade away, the eternal fruit, the nations, the uttermost parts of the world, fruit that's going to remain. And we're just striving for something that's going to last till next week. nations are waiting 
Your neighborhood's waiting. People are waiting. I can't even watch one of those commercials about St. Jude's Hospital or something without weeping. I'm like, Lord, don't we owe them? Don't we owe them? The hindrances of iniquity, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, those possessing the life of God. And they have to run commercials about a hospital with dying children. I'm like, God, don't we owe it to them? What are we doing? Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Bind up the brokenhearted. Preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. To the oppressed, go free. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Spirit of the Lord is upon you for these things. Set the captives free everywhere you go. You're not going to do that in an earth realm. You're not going to do that with a life consumed by you. You're not going to do that when it's all about your short little human existence without an eternal perspective. You won't do it. It's the only reason people don't do it. Because they caught up. It's one thing you lack. It's one thing. It's one thing. Go sell everything. Go sell everything so valuable to you. Go sell it all. Take up your cross. Follow me. It's the most blessed life. It's the most beautiful life. I told Pastor Mark the other day, I'm like, I'm like, Pastor, if I had any idea how awesome this was, I would have done it years ago. And he's like, I, and he goes, but God has a time. God, I'm like, I, I know that. He knew what I meant. I'm like, but it's just so good. It's like when I got saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, if I only knew, if I only knew, if I only knew how good he was, if I only knew he was so real, if I only knew this is what life was supposed to be like, if this is what the life of Jesus looked like, where I lost myself and I was unaware of my, it's like you're unaware of your life. It's only his, doing his life. purpose to be us to be a city set up on a hill. That's what he's purposed us to be. Purpose us to be that light in the house that gets put in the lampstand for all to see. His purpose is to shine. Shine like the sun. Rise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. That's what he's purposed. That's what he's purposed. To shine. You don't shine. He shines. You being you don't shine. Put all the makeup you want on, make yourself look good, exercise. Bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness into eternity. God's always about the eternal. Eternal. You can shine for him. You can shine for him, and it'd be a life worth living. You can shine for him and bring all that are around, around you with him. Because you just shine all over. Hallelujah. And the Lord will take care of everything. The Lord will take care of everything. You got to worry about how you go, how you do, what you do. You don't have to worry about any of that. The nations seek these things, not us, not this nation, not the, not the kingdom of God. Our kingdom's rich, our kingdom's full, it's a wealthy kingdom. It's a good economy in this kingdom. Everything's fine. It's all good. It's all good. You just have to know your kingdom really well. You got to know what you're a part of. You got to know what's around you. You got to know what camp you're in. You got to. It's got to be real obvious to you. You get so lost in His Word, so lost in the glory, so lost in heaven. One little fiery dart from the enemy's camp sails over, and you're like, "Whoa! That's, that's uh, foreign. Foreign doesn't belong here. You'll send it right back." You won't wonder. I mean, I, I think about this. It's like the, the, the counterfeiters. We've heard this before, but those counterfeiters who study counterfeiting money, the, the uh, authorities who do that, you know, they don't, they don't train them. They don't train them in, in fake money. They don't put fake money before them all the time. Fake money, fake money, fake money. So they know what fake money is, fake money. No, 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 no. They show them the real thing. 
and they show up, they get intimately acquainted, and they know it so well, and they know where every number is, and every uh, how it folds, and uh, the feel of it, everything about it, how it feels, what it looks like. They're so intimately acquainted with the real thing that they put a foreign bill in front of them. They're like, oh, no, that's not it. That's, that is off. They might not even know why, but they're so acquainted. They're so used to being in the real thing continually. The foreign thing comes, and they're like, that ain't it. That's from a different camp. That, that's not from this kingdom. That's from somewhere else. That doesn't look like what I'm used to walking in all the time. It feels different. It looks different. It's contrary to the word of God. It's, it's off. It's not it. And that's what will happen for our lives when you spend your life in heaven. Father is genuinely purposed. Heaven was supposed to begin the day you said yes to Jesus. That is when your heaven began. Because we know that heaven is far more than a quantity of time, but a quality of life. Defined in the life of Jesus. Defined in love and joy and peace. For the kingdom of heaven is not, is not meat and drink, empty outward expressions, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's how we fundamentally participate with the kingdom of God. On a minute-by-minute -minute basis, we know that is the kingdom. That's where we live, and that's where we dwell, and that's where we move, and that's where we have our being. That's where we're in. That's where we're in that all the time. So the word can't pull on us. We're in the glory. Can't pull on us. The more we spend time there, the more we love it. The more we love it. I learned how to love the presence of the Lord just by hanging out there. Hanging out there, just staying in it, staying in it. Time after time, just lingering. I could go, and I stayed a little longer. I could go, and I stayed. Last night we had a, we were over at the Tabor's house, and we were doing an awesome worship night, and it was really good. And then we just, we just lingered in the presence of the Lord. And we stayed a little longer. 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 Because it was awesome. It was the presence of the Lord. What compares on the level of eternity, on the, on the level of forever, what compares? What do you have to be? Like, you're going to be tired anyway. <laughs> you get enough rest, you're tired. You don't get enough rest, you're tired. Who cares? Who cares? You care if, like, you're all wrapped up in the how you feel. That's, that's, that's when you care. We need rest, but nonetheless, it's still, it's still true. I want my life to count. I want my life to count. I'm running a race. I'm running a race. God's calling for people to lay down their lives. Laying down your life. You can take up his can be a life worth living. You can genuinely go from glory to glory. You'll live that glory on the earth all of your days. And you don't even know when you step, you don't even recognize when you stepped over into eternity. Because you just went from glory to glory. It can genuinely be that way. You can have your last bad day. You could have had your last bad day. Your last discouraging experience. Your last sad moment. Because you realize that that's it's not about that circumstance you got upset about. It's the enemy of your soul with a sword in your face saying, come on over here. Come over here. Come and get in my prison in my camp. And you say, no, I'm staying in the camp of the kingdom of God because the second I do that, it's going to make me, it, it, it's a snowball effect. I, let, I get discouraged, and the next thing I know, I'm caring, and it's riches, cares, riches, and pleasures, and I'm stuck again, and I'm not being effective, and I'm not feeling God, and I'm not feeling hungry, and I missed my prayer, and now it's just a snowball effect. And that will happen your whole, it could happen your whole life. It could happen your whole life. And you look at the end of it and realize it's not when you want to realize it's not the, look, people who have already died and gone before us, they get it. They already get it. They understand. Oh, my, what did I spend my life on? They get it. It's not the dead who are in need of an eternal revelation. It's the living. It's us. We need it. They get it. Every tombstone and every cemetery, they get it. They fully get it. We need it. We need it now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bow your heads with me. Hallelujah. Father, we seek a city. We seek a city whose builder and maker is God. Father, we recognize that we're, we're, we're pilgrims here. We're not from this place, oh God. We're not of the world even as you are not of the world, oh God. 
We're not from here, dude. We're not from here. We're not from here. Jesus. 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 Baptize me, baptize me, Jesus, Jesus, come baptize me, come baptize me. Cause I want to see you lifted high. <laughs> I want to see you in my life. Jesus, take up my cross and I'll follow you, Lord. Lay down my life. Like you taught me to do. Jesus, Jesus, take our lives, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, take my life, Lord. Only for your purposes will I live. Not to please myself, but my Father in heaven. Every day, every day to live for you. Everything, everything, everything you have required, I give to you. My whole life, holding nothing back for me, saving nothing for me. Pour myself out as an offering like you did. Pour myself out. Use my life as an offering, God. Pour it out. Let it be holy, sacred, without spot or blemish. A perfect offering for, for you, for your use, oh God. So my heart's cry, Jesus, no, use me, Lord, for your glory. Use me. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, be seen tonight. Jesus, I thank you for coming and manifesting yourself, for revealing yourself here tonight in the midst of your church, oh God. Come and revealing, coming manifesting yourself in the midst of your church, oh God. Father, thank you for the gospel, this fire that you put in our mouths, oh God. That every chain has to be broken, every captive has to be set free, every mindset of the enemy has to be broken. Everyone has to be released from their prisons in the presence of Jesus. Everything that's held you back from fulfilling all that God calls you to do. You say, go free in Jesus' name. We release you from your prison. We release you from your prison. Oh, that's held you back from living the life of Jesus. We release you from your prison now so that you can see clearly from heaven's perspective, seated with Christ in heavenly places. Go free. Go free from the realm of you. Oh, you got to decide that one. Go free. Go free. Be liberated to live out the life of the Son. Be liberated. Think not, a 
it's for another day. Thank God it's for another hour. What time do you think we have? It's now. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's coming soon. It won't be long now. It won't be long now. Will he find you doing your father's business? Will he find you doing his business of your own? What will be found? All will be brought into the light. Jesus. 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 I want everybody to pray with me right now. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I want my life to count. I want the life of Jesus. I don't want to live my own life. I don't want to live my life for myself. I want to live my life for you. Everything I do with my tongue. Everything I do with my time. Everything I do with my talent. I want it to all be for your purposes, oh God. I won't save any for me. I'll pour my life out as an offering. I'll lose my life. And I'll find it in you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Baptize me. Come 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 baptize me. I just let him baptize you. The gospel is not for information purposes only. It's for manifestation. It's the power of God into salvation. It's for transformation. It must manifest now. It must manifest in the hearts of all who believe, all who hunger, all who thirst. Not information. Not information. Transformation. Reality. Miracle. Power. Manifestation now. For all who hunger, for all who thirst. For all who hungry, he heard your hearts cry to live for him. Let him do his work in your heart. Let him do his work. Let him do his works right now. Let him do his works right now. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do his works. Let him do his works. Let him do his works now. He's here to do them right now. Right now. He's here to do them. This is no different than those meetings a couple of weekends ago where all we were hungry and thirst but to get, begin to be touched with the power of God. And Jesus began to do his works. He began to do his signs and his wonders. He began to do his father's business in the house. No different. No different. All who hunger, all who thirst, all who are unwilling to settle with anything but the life of Jesus, but the ministry of Jesus, but the works of Jesus. What else matters? What else matters when it's all said and done? What else matters? What else matters but living in the sun? What else matters? What else matters? What else matters? Oh, what else matters? Oh, what else matters but you, Jesus? Oh, what else matters but you, Jesus? 
Oh, Jesus, fill, fill every hungry heart right now. Fill every hungry heart. Fill every hungry heart. Fill all who thirst, who all who want to move on with God. Oh, fill, Lord. Fill, fill, come fill. As they pour themselves out as an offering, come and fill them up with you. Come and fill them up with your very own self. Fill them up with your very own purposes. Come and fill them up. Give them a heavenly dream. Let them trade their dream for a divine dream. Let them trade all for the life of Christ. Let them trade their business for your business. Let them trade their works for your works. Oh God. Oh God. We trade all that is natural and temporal for all that is eternal. That will last forever. We trade it all. We trade it all for you, Lord. <laughs> we trade it all for you, Lord. We trade it all for you. <laughs> Jesus. Huh. Trade it all, trade it all, trade it all right now. Hold nothing back. Trade it all, trade it all, trade it all. Hold nothing back. We trade it all for you, Jesus. We trade it all. Hold nothing back for me. Hold nothing back for me. I trade it all. Use my life, Lord, for your purposes, oh God. Use my life, Lord. Jesus, there's nothing I own, nothing I possess. I've given it all to you, Jesus. You have everything, you have everything, you have everything, Lord. Every dream, every desire, oh God, all belongs to you. I've redefined my life after the life of Jesus. I've redefined it, I've redefined it, I've redefined it, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here right now, he's here right now, he's here right now, whatever you need, you grab it right now, he's here, I see some of you getting it, yep, that's Jesus right there, yep, 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 that's Jesus, ah, that's Jesus, doing his works, He's doing his works. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Come on, a little deeper. Oh, oh, a little deeper, a little deeper. <laughs> redefined, life redefined by the sun. Jesus, oh Jesus, touch every hungry heart, touch every hungry, every thirsty heart, let them never be the same. Let them never be the same, 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 let them never be the same. It's time to go on, it's time to go on, it's time to go on, it's time to move on now, it's time to move on now. I'm going to pray for some people, I'm going to pray for some people right now. If you want prayer, I want you to come right now, it's time to move on. It's just time to move on. It's time to go forward. It's time to go forward in God. It's going to cost you everything. Walking down here will cost you everything. 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 It's going to cost you everything. Your very own life. It's going to cost you everything. It's not going to, oh, oh, so I'm done. it's not going to be casual. It's going to cost you everything. It's going to cost you everything. He's too precious to trade his whole life for only part of yours. It's going to cost you everything. Everything tonight, oh God, we give you everything. We give you everything. Everything. Ha. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus, tonight, Jesus, tonight, the miracles, tonight, the miracles. Everything to you, I give you everything for you, everything. I give you everything, it's all for you. I give you everything, it's all for you. I give you everything, it's all for you. We'll hold nothing back for us. I give you everything, it's all for you. 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 Everything, everything right now in Jesus' name. Everything, holding nothing back. And nothing back, nothing back, nothing back in the name of Jesus. All in, all in for his kingdom. All in for his glory. Everything, everything, everything. Everything right now, everything, everything, everything. A consecration, a consecration, a consecration. Now, oh God, now, oh God, now, oh God, now, oh God. This life, all for your purposes. All for your purposes, oh God. Everything, all of our energy, all of our time, everything she asked for your kingdom, for your purposes, oh God. Everything, 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 everything. Fill her, fill her, fill her. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Everything, 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 holding nothing back. Everything. Oh, everything, oh God, everything, oh God. We give you everything, Jesus. Oh, so my prayer to us, boy. Oh, Jesus. Nothing without you. Nothing without you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Truly, we have nothing without you. We have nothing. We have nothing. We have nothing. Naked, barren, a wasteland. Nothing without you, oh God. Nothing, nothing, nothing without you, oh Jesus. Jesus, right now. Jesus, Jesus, right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. For your glory, for your glory, for your glory. For your glory, for your glory. All your purposes for his glory. For his glory, for his glory, for his glory. Your life to find out to heaven. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Serve Jesus all the days of your life. All the days of your life, every purpose for him. Every person filled now. Filled. 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 Filled now. Filled now. Filled. Filled. In Jesus' name, right now. Right now. Right now. All his purposes are your purposes. Right now. Right now. All the Lord's purposes are your purposes. Every bit of energy that he has. Every bit of energy that he has. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. New life. New life. A new, a new, a new focus. A new past. A new, a new path. A new path. I see a new path. I see a new path in Jesus' name. I see a new path. It's a new path. Mom de Rabasse, Brepai, Rapando, stay. Yep. Masu Korama Masepra, E Prabalana Masepra, E Prapandara Mastepra Babande, E Brava Babanda. Oh, Jesus, right now, right now. Yo, Mastepre, Mastepre, Mindre, Esepre, Bandala Mastepra Babande, E Brabanda. Fail, 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 Mastepre. More, Lord, more, more. Jesus. Jesus, all for your glory, all for your glory, all for your glory, Lord, all for your glory, all for your glory, Jesus, 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 do your work here, do your work here, oh God, do your work, do your work, do your work, the Lord's doing his work right now, whatever you need, whatever you need, reach out, reach out, the biggest thing you need is to lose your life, you lose your life and you gain his, his life is perfect, 
There's nothing that needs to be healed in the life of Jesus. Just trade your life for his. Just trade your life for his. Oh, just trade your life for his. Right now, right now. Right now, right now. His life, his life. Right now, his life, his life. More, 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 more. more. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. No, nothing else matters but his life. Oh, love not your life. Love not your life. Love not your life. Love not your life. Love not. Love not your life. 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 Oh, oh. Love not your life. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Right now, Jesus. Right now, do your works, O oh God. Right now, do your works, O oh God. Do your works. Do your works. My Soprambada si viande. E pra mastea. E pra castea. E pra ca. Ne prasto. Mi prande. E prando. E sela la mamaia. Tutu aiese. Marose. Marose. Mapatonde. Aradonde. Erastonde. Oh, Sopanda reste. Oh, mama, mama, maste. Mangebre. Nameste. Namosto. Namese. Bramama. Sebra. Babaka. Taya. Mandosta. Mandola. Namosta. Emesta. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus is doing his miracles. You understand? He's doing his miracles. He's doing his miracles right now. He's doing his miracles. This is just what the other weekend looked like, and it was miracle, 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 a miracle, a miracle, a miracle. Oh, maista prabanda riasta bravere banoste. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus now, Jesus, 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 all for your purposes, for your purposes, everything, all for your purposes. You define your life in this world according to the life of Jesus, not according to anybody else. The life of Jesus, Jesus, him only, him only, him only. That's the dream for your life. That's the dream. That's the dream, the life of Jesus. And it's not just a dream. He's given it to you freely. Hallelujah. Master prepare the monosto. Je bramno se bramana na mando se prebere de bando ste. Chilesto, chilesto, masti bramano se bramama mama master. Such a call here. Such a call of God here. Such a call of God here. Such a call. Such a call, man. It's just a call. It's just, just a past. Caramocoste, e prapa cosinde, e rupia, e rusta, e rusta. Nice to bando, stin bando, restea. In genus tu brandoste, in jumra stu brandiste, in jumra sti brandoste. Orenuste, arenande, areneste, asta taia. Ah, prophesy. Oh, masta cam da revista, prophesy. Nesa caranuste, e sala la mataia, e sala la mataia, e sala la mataia. 
Jesus, 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 my, 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 look what the Lord has done, my, 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 hallelujah, Jesus, fill, 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 fill with the heaven, fill, 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 I'll give everything, mm -mm. yeah, yeah, that's right, everything, Everything. I'll give everything. Yeah. Everything. 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 Because that's what he's asking for. I'll give everything. Everything. Because that's what he asked for. Because that's what he asked for. He asked for everything. I'll hold he asked for everything. From he asked for everything. He asked for everything. I'll give everything.
Relegated to some American caste system. So much more. So much more. <laughs> Hallelujah. So much more. So much more. So much more. I need the level of heaven. serving Jesus is just too easy to complicate. It's just too easy to complicate. I see Brahma sit there. Name Ramoste. I run a friend. Possessed by the living God. Possessed 
He moves you. In him you live and you move and you have your being. He moves you. In the middle of it you realize you're being moved. He possesses you. He possesses you. He moves you before you even realize it. You're so given over to him. So given over to this life. My sacrifice time. Hey, sacrificer. Hey, professor Terra. Hey, sacrifice. 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 Hey, This one that meets the eyes. Yeah, that's what I heard. There's more to this one that meets the eyes. You gotta surprise some people. I'm a surprise. We give you You gotta surprise some people. Maybe it's you who gets to surprise them. That's the paradox. Every most of us. 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 Let tonight be a redefining night for you. Let it be. So all you see is heaven. Tell yourself about it. Preach to yourself. Stir yourself up. That heaven is all that matters. That eternity is all that matters. That everything else will be burnt up on that day. That all else will be burnt up on that day. It's only heaven. It's only the eternal things that matter. 
You'll be challenged. You'll be challenged. The earth will come in and uh, try to attempt to sway you back into some normal, carnal human existence where your selfish pursuits and pursuits of the world and all the things that society tells you you're supposed to have and you're supposed to go after that you should have by now and all the other nonsense. Don't listen. Heaven. You want your life to count on that day? You want to look back in no time at all at this night and like, yep, that's the night that it changed. I'm so glad that it changed. I'm so glad on March 11th, Wednesday night, it changed. Remember the night he got redefined. I saw people as spirits on the way to heaven or hell. I knew, started to know no man after the flesh, not even myself. Everything was spiritual. It's all that mattered. Eternal, eternal, eternal. Let it be that way tonight. Let it be that way tonight. Stir yourself up. <laughs> If I lose my life, then I find it. If I find my life, then I lose it. So I'm holding on to you, Jesus. I'm holding on to you, Jesus. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I lose it. So I'm holding on to you. Hallelujah. Holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. Huh. Father promises that nobody who's left houses and lands and fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters shall not receive a hundredfold in this life and the life that is to come. He promises, he promises. Mm. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. Not on to me. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. If I lose my life, I'll find it. If I find my life, I'll lose it. I'm holding on to you. Jesus. 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 The things that Father has prepared for those who love him. Mm -mm -mm. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it ever entered in the heart of man the things the Father has prepared 
for those that love him. The great adventure that it waits for you as you lose your life. So that you can boldly say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. When you can't wait to go to heaven, when you can't wait, when there's not one thing holding on to you in this life, you can't wait to go to heaven right now. You don't got the, well, I want to see my kids grow up. Well, I want to see this happen. Well, I want to see that happen. No, we're talking about heaven. What? We're talking about heaven. Heaven. Man, when you can say that. Oh, the adventure that awaits for you, both here on earth and afterwards. The adventure that awaits for you. The nations for your inheritance. Out in those parts of the world for your possessions. Setting the captives free. Laying hands on the sick and them recovering. I'm certain that watching a little baby with club feet and feet spin around when you say the name of Jesus, Rita finds it all for you. A taste of the powers of the world to come like that. Certain of it. Certain of it. Certain of it doesn't take long either when you go all in. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long at all. There's a maturation process. There's a, there's a, there's a, a time that God sets you apart. He did the min- Jesus didn't start his ministry till he was 30. There was a time when he was learning obedience. He was learning obedience by the things that he suffered. He was learning obedience. Paul went away and he went away. They had their season. They had their time to grow before God shot him out like an arrow. And they pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled. Stretched. He felt it. Ah. And then he just lets you go. He flies so far and so fast. We thank God we haven't left too quick. Too quick. We want it to be by the Holy Ghost. Let God make no mistake, that's God's purpose. For the nations are waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. The nations are waiting. The nations are waiting for you. (laughs) If I told you what I saw right now on you, I see nations on some of you. I see flags of nations on some of you. I see it's as if your skin color changed to that nation. I see it on some of you. <laughs> nations are calling. Nations are calling. They call, they call. <laughs> Keep me ready. God's preparing. God's setting things in order. He's making everything right. So when you go, the, you build you build tall. You're tall, but you're really deep. And you were really deep before you ever got really tall, before you did all the things that God would have you do. So many churches, tall, they're tall, they're so tall. But they're not deep. They're not deep. They're tall, been in tall. Lots of people tall. so deep it's been so dug so deep here when you go out oh, 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 so much offer to offer this world so much God will set the whole thing up for you too God will set the whole thing up for you too One day I was walking around my house, praying in the Holy Ghost, spending my time with the Lord, praying. I began to look around my house. And I started seeing all these little artifacts from all over the world that my friends have traveled all over the world and done crusades and preached the gospel and missions all over my house. I saw this giraffe from Africa and this, this, this rhinoceros here and this hippo there and this it's all carved out of wood. And I saw this pillow on the bed, this beaded pillow from India. I saw the nations all around me. Some of those friends in mass evangelism. They're friends of mine back in Florida. I'm like, my, my, my. The nations. At the time, we had our dear friend, 
uh, Mike Francine with us here in San Diego. He stayed with me, looked in the guest room like, my, the nations, the man of God in my house. I looked at my weekends and they were consumed by preaching the gospel in our local parks, compelling people to come to Jesus, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. I thought to myself, my, maybe I'm supposed to do some crusades or something. I'm surrounded by this. And it began to burn and stir in me. Stir in me. I began throughout the summer to say, I think Africa. I think Africa is going to happen. I feel Africa. It's not this year, but I feel Africa. I think Africa is happening next year. I feel Africa. I began to talk about it. It was in my heart. It began to come out of my mouth. I go to do a, a week of meetings down in Texas. And one of the other ministers ministering that week, actually the only other minister ministering that week, is this uh, minister from Mombasa, Kenya, Bishop Robert Wafula. He's got a million people underneath him, and 400 churches, an infrastructure, pure heart, been preaching this gospel. Infrastructure already set up. Became dear friends. And I knew whenever they said I was ministering with this African preacher, I said, Africa. So I went. And we became dear friends. It was not two, three days into it. He's like, you must come to Africa. You must come to Africa and do crusades. I'm like, I would love to. And he's like, we will take care of everything. You just come. You just come. And the Lord just lays out a way for you. Is your faithful. Is your faithful. The Lord told me a long, a long time ago. A long time ago. It was in early in the summer. When I decided I'm just going to go to Finland. He said, don't you ever let money stop you from preaching my gospel. Don't you ever let it you stop it from, from preaching my gospel. You go to where I send you. You be, you be led by the Holy Ghost, be inspired, and you go. The first time I went overseas, I had 10 bucks in my pocket. Came back with five. The next time I went, I think I had my hotel paid for, maybe a little bit more taken care of. Still had to believe God. Now this next time, everything's taken. The crusades are all taken care of. God makes a way. Are you willing to go? Will you just go after the fish? Will you just go after the harvest? Will you just do what he's purposed in your heart? Not have to get all this stuff in order. Get your house in order. Then you're going to do it. Bury the dead and then go do it. Will you let all that take care of itself and just do what he told you to do? Will you just do it? Because the, the worst thing that could happen is you consecrate. You lay it all out there. And then tomorrow, nothing changes. <laughs> nothing. Begin to move in God. Begin to move in God. Begin to do something. Do something. Before I left that week of those meetings, the entire plane was taken care of. The hotel was taken care of. Everything was taken care of. So in... Four weeks, I hop on a plane from Mombasa, Kenya for two and a half weeks to do mass crusades in Mombasa, Kenya, all taken care of. Just because nobody was giving me a microphone. I saw, I went to the park and preached Jesus because it was in my heart. I moved out, I stepped out, I did something. First time I did it, it was all me. Pulled out my wallet, bought 200 hot dogs, and we had a party, and people came to Jesus. And I was like, that's so easy. That's so easy. I affected eternity today. <laughs> I don't know if I did yesterday or the day before, but I did today. <laughs> it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Now it's just like a snowball effect. Now the whole south of Mexico opens. Same thing. A guy's like, come, we have everything. Come preach. So we go preach all through the south of Mexico. Pakistan is opening up radical places. The nations for your inheritance. The uttermost parts of the world for your possessions. Be careful what you ask for your inheritance and your possessions. And God wants to give you so much more. I literally lay in my bed at night and going, riches, riches, oh God. These riches, when I think about the people and the lives that are touched. You'll leave churches you leave churches, not because of you, but because of the gift of God on the inside of you, because Jesus was seen, because Jesus was seen. 
in the meeting and all they know have is you to, to talk to. So they're crying, saying, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. We didn't know these things. We didn't know we could be free from sin. We didn't know we were saints, not sinners. We didn't know we could live out the life of God. We didn't know heaven was available. We didn't know we could live days of heaven on earth. They don't know. People really don't know. Churches across America don't know. Neither do the nations. But you know. But you know. To the nations you go. To the nations we go. We will fully preach the gospel from Jerusalem to Illyricum, out of most parts of the earth. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you'll be witnesses unto me from Jerusalem to Judea, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. What a mighty presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus.
This is not about what we can do. We can do nothing. This is about what he can do. He can do everything. There is nothing he cannot do. He can raise the dead. He can heal the blind. He was raised from the dead. He was buried three days and raised from the dead. He healed the blind. He healed the sick. He cri the crippled walked. He did all things. And now he just asks us to do the same. And he gives us the power to do more. He said, go everywhere and do the things that I do and do greater things. And so we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's not our things. It's his things. It's not our power. It's his power. True. 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 Amen. That's right. It's true. All about him, not about us. Jesus. You learn really quick that it has nothing to do with you when you stand up in front of a bunch of people and all of a sudden you got nothing. Blank, not a zip. You're like, I'm supposed to speak and I don't have anything. Nothing, nothing. Talk about terror. It's you without the Holy Ghost. It's me as be without the Holy Ghost. I got nothing. Nothing. But he'll fill your mouth and a river pull out, pour out. He'll fill your mouth. He's giving you a river. You got a river on the inside of you. You got a river. You got a river. You get you get you get in a you, you get in the river. Ain't no question. Ain't no question it's all about the river and not about you. It's got you, you do not have it. You don't, you don't have the river. It's got you. You get in the river. It's taking over. It's taking control. That's the river that he's given us. If we yield to it, that's the river. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I love you guys. I'm so glad to be home. Ah, I love to see glorious Holy Ghost faces. Usually by the time I end, leave a church, they're all glorious Holy Ghost faces. But they don't start that way. Not always. A lot of times it's, they're good. Anyway, I love you very much. Hug everybody. Love everybody. You can stay right there, too, and just keep talking to Jesus. That's fine, too. That's good. Amen. Love you. Hug, squeeze, hug. Holy kiss. Love.